and welcome to another edition of The Maddox Show. Can you believe it's been 300 freaking episodes? 300! Almost 9 years, over 65,000 subscribers, over 17 million minutes watched! So before we get started, I just want to say thanks. Seriously, you guys are amazing from the support I've gotten. It took me to Valencia and the Magic Invitational to the Patreon today. It's amazing. And to see channels like Tolarian Community College, hi, Professor, take off the way they have. That is fantastic and humbling. So anyway, let's talk about some Magic cards. First up, it's Magic Origins. So we get to tell where everyone came from. When it comes to Gideon, or Kithian, he's from Theros. And that also means he's the best Savannah lion ever. But remember my last show, you know, where I said Nyssa was completely nuts and the best new planeswalker? On June 16th, mind you, before this guy and this guy and a bunch of other sites declared that this card was the best one in the set. Yep, I know I get them wrong, I know, but it feels damn good to be right. So where does Kithion fall in the rankings? Well, here's where we had him last time. Nyssa... Jace, Chandra, and Liliana Lass. Well, based on several better Magic players than myself discussing her power level, I'm pretty happy to move Liliana up to the second best of said power level, right behind Nyssa. Gideon would probably fall second to last. Sorry, man, you've just got some incredible competition. While it's a fantastic Savannah line, it's still just a Savannah line. And it doesn't trigger off itself like Liliana, it doesn't power up itself like Nyssa, and it doesn't draw cards like Jace. But still, he's damn good. He's just not that good. Personally, I'm still waiting for the legendary white 3-1 for a single white mana. Those Savannah Line creatures just ain't cutting it these days. Anyway, moving on, Archangel of Tithes is a fantastic way to kick off the white cards. Four mana, hard to attack into, hard to block, and will do wonders for a white devotion strategy. Just look at all those mana symbols. Next up is Dead Flying Kids, aka Blessed Souls, with some of the most brutal flavor text I've, I've ever seen. <laughs> you know... Not all heroes die in armor. <laughs> Thanks for keeping it real, wizards. Hallowed Moonlight is one hell of a magic card. Do you realize how much this hoses? It doesn't just fog a Splinter Twin or whiff a Dread Return. It doesn't just stop sneak attack shenanigans and Dread Return nonsense. It stops innocuous things like Dragon Fodder and Hordling Outburst. And if you don't have anything to do with it, well, just for two mana, you cycle it, draw a card, and move on with your life. But hey, everyone, Knight of the White Orchid is being reprinted. Yay! Now for you new players, this was originally printed in Shards of Alara almost seven years ago, which officially makes me an old man, but also means that you don't realize how good this guy is. When you're on the draw, there ain't nothing better than playing a Knight of the White Orchid to catch you up in resources. The first strike ain't nothing to shy at either, and is more relevant than you may give it credit for. Kithion's Irregulars is a card that could break out in Standard. It's also our first instance of Renown in the set. Renown is a new mechanic for Magic Origins, and it is sweet. It was originally spoiled as Famous, which I thought was absolutely hilarious. If it isn't Famous, put a plus one plus one counter on it, and it becomes Famous. It's just a phrase waiting to be made fun of, like this, Ballin'. If it isn't Ballin', you put two plus one plus one counters on it, and it becomes Ballin'. Big Pimpin', it gets three plus one plus one counters, and Crunktacular Stunt Nuts, it becomes indestructible and makes you feel bad for even thinking it would be any different. But seriously, the ability to make combat important, reward you for it, and trigger off it is sweet. We'll see more of this moving forward. Relic Seeker was originally an exciting one, but I think we've come back down to Earth first. We need better equipment to fetch in Standard, but regardless, Stoneforge Mystic, this ain't. Stoneforge Mystic is its own one-two punch, bypasses counter magic, and enables itself. This guy hopes to hit your opponent, so he does something. I'm much more excited about Sigil of the Empty Throne coming back while we still have Theros for three months. I mean, look, at Sigil of the Empty Throne, plus this incredible new spoiler, Starfield of Nyx. Oh my god, Becky, look at that combo. It is so sick. I bet it's one of those Pro Tour guys deck choices. Also, was I the only one who read Tragic Arrogance and was like, what is Wizard thinking? Oh, and, and then you keep the lands. Pretty sure I wasn't the only one on that because Cataclysm is a real fair magic card. It is not a real fair magic card, which is too slow and clunky in Legacy, but it would do freak nasty things to Standard. What may do some things in Standard, not sure if they're freak nasty or anything, is from a little horse we call Viren Wingmare. This guy is Thalia with wings, a strictly better glow rider, and one that you can play multiples of with no worries. If there's a white weenie deck to be played, this one would be in it as the power to make Heroes Downfall cost four, and Crux of Fate cost six is a big deal, and setting behind control players who are trying to play big spells for big effects allows your team to deal more and more damage while they deal with a flying 2-1. Moving into the blue cards, we start with Clash of Wills. This effect has always seen standard play, and I would expect no less. Power Sync, Condescend, and Syncopate all say what's up. I know it's not super exciting, but it counters anything on turn two, and that's a BD. Yeah, Bacon Deluxe. You know what I'm talking about. 
Days Undoing is like time reversal, but cheaper and ending the turn and could actually see play this time. I have no idea, but Lord knows Wizards has pushed this as far as they could. It also highlights how many deemed Magic Origins as the strictly worse than set. Well, I don't think this is 100% true, there are plenty of examples that can be pointed to, and we'll get to some as we go on. A card that fascinates me is Disciple of the Ring. Now, I know Aetherling was a hallmark in Control Decks as it's a fantastic finisher. Is this the new Aetherling? Dying to removal is one thing, but late game, isn't this the creature blue-white or blue-black decks want to be slamming down? Anything that could kill it, like the upcoming Languish, it can grow to not succumb to it. That includes you casting the Languish yourself and wanting to keep your Disciple around. We'll see. While Disciple of the Ring is a question mark, an exclamation mark is what represents Harbinger of Tides. This guy is so sweet, and this is the two-drop those mono-blue Devotion players have been looking for. It's good early, bouncing something like an Elvish Mystic, and it's good late, bouncing an attacking token or a big monster they're bashing in with. It's a tempo player's dream, as you can pay a kicker to get it at instant speed, or just run it out at sorcery speed and slow down your opponent just another little bit. I do want to quickly mention that Jesse and Thief is the Ophidian we need and deserve. Spoiled early, I think a lot of people have forgotten about her, just like Dre, but rest assured this creature is plenty awesome. Mizium Meddler. Ah, another in the long line of we also wish Splinter Twin didn't exist in Modern. No, we still won't ban it, and so here's another stupid hoser love letter from Wizards. Fine. Just don't ban it. See if I care. Oh man, look, they reprinted Patrick Scryfish. Yay! If you weren't aware, this card is awesome and subtly powerful as all get out. Three toughness is no joke, people, and this card will win you games in the long run. You had no right winning. Go, go, Patrick. Were the Rogue is the first in the Thopter Makers I'm highlighting in the set, and damn, Wizards, this thing is four mana for four power and four toughness across three creatures, and it's like, that's like constructed playable stats. And it can use the Thopters it makes to trigger itself on the turn they come into play. And it can use cards like equipment to use its ability as well. Sign me up. Now, for those complaining about low power level, between this and Mom and Dad, also known as Kia and Pira Nalar, these Thopter cards ain't messing around. Dark Petition could really be a powerful magic card. The ability to tutor up a card and then get free mana to play it? I mean, look at the sweet flavor here. This card can tutor up and play Liliana Vess in both modern and now standard. Many are discussing this going into storm builds and in decks like Pyromancer's Ascension. While I have my doubts, is five mana is a lot of mana, y'all. The future is a cloudy one. While it looks sweet, I'd argue that this isn't going to get there. Speaking of flavor, oh man, Demonic Pact? First up, really? Over 20 years and we're just now naming a card Demonic Pact? Anyway, four different options. One of them, oops, kills you. However, there are plenty of ways to kill enchantments these days. Just so many, for real. The question is, does a four mana do nothing when it enters the battlefield really good enough to get there? I doubt it. Super cool, however, as this card came in second from the recent You Make the Card contest, I'm glad Watsy holds on to good ideas to use for later. What four mana card will see plenty of play in standard? Well, it had to be a Titan, of course, as Erobos' Titan is like Batman. He's here to kick ass and hug his parents, and he's all out of parents. I know the ability looks weird, but just like the Archangel of Tithes, look at all those mana symbols. Gary says, what's up? The Merchant of Kicking Your Ass, Fodel, has been missing cards like this one, and it lives through Languish. Speaking of, seriously, this is pretty much as close as you're getting to Damnation as Watsy is okay with, and there's nothing wrong with that. Standard All-Star incoming, because you know, the Siege Rhino decks were just so bad, they needed another thing to be good. And when it comes to great, Liliana Heretical Healer is a card I underrated. Here's a few things that changed my mind. First of all, she triggers on herself. And by that I mean, if you play another copy, the legendary rule makes you sacrifice one, fulfilling her requirement to flip. You can do the same trick with Whip of Erebos, causing her to flip as well as whipping back cards like Fleshbag Marauder. So yeah, she's no Nyssa, but she's damn good. I just want to highlight Night Snare, as I did on Twitter, because bravo, Watsy, this is a terrific design and I hope to see more elegant design like this in the future. For those confused, you either get a Coercion or a Mind Rod. This card is basically a split spell without you even realizing it. And that is some clever stuff right there. Kudos, Wizards. Priest of the Blood Rite is next, and seriously? People aren't excited about this card that was basically made to work with the new Liliana deck perfectly. Fleshbag Marauder is perfect with this. Sedisi Undead Vizier works perfectly with this. Whip of Erebos and this guy are total BFFs. It's seven power and toughness across two creatures, one of which is a 5-5 five, five flying demon token for God's sake, and the token has absolutely no drawbacks. None. This guy is both the whip and the nay nay. You know what I'm saying? I expect this guy to see lots of play. And because I like to mention silly combos, Tainted Remedy is now in standard alongside Congregate, which does say target player. And no, Feed the Clan does not say target target player. This PSA brought to you by Don't Even Try to Make Fetch Happen Here. Seriously. Wandering into the red cards, we have Abbot of Carol Keep. Good early, good late, good in the deck chock full of cheap cards. This guy is sweet and they keep pushing the exile cards and play them this turn in red, which is awesome. Flavor alert, Chandra's Ignition will trigger Chandra Fire of Kaladesh to turn into her Planeswalker self. Man, talk about being fresh out the kitchen. Chandra rolling that Earthquake got every burn spell in here wishing. All right, all right. Sorry, not sorry. 
Char, I'm gonna let you finish. I am, but Exquisite Firecraft is one of the best burn spells of all time. Of all time! Discard! Damn, Wizard, you really like your burn spells, don't you? This is a fantastic rate, a great ability, and in a deck that just wants everything to burn, this spell is fantastic and will be seen play in modern and perhaps beyond. Ah, Fiery Impulse. As long as you only read it once, you won't be disappointed. Yeah. It only says creature. Next. Goblin Glory Chaser is so close to the almost goblin guide I requested on Twitter. So close! It's still probably good enough, particularly because it lost haste, but it gained menace when renowned, and that's no joke for a one mana red creature. And modern players, you are welcome. WotC used their last corset to run out Goblin Pile Driver one more time, bringing the Goblin's deck to standard, modern, and beyond. It would have been weird in almost any other upcoming set, so they saw an opportunity and jumped on it. You thought you'd seen the end of Goblin Ravel Master, eh? Nope. Magic players, there will be gobos to try and rip people's heads off for the foreseeable. Magmatic Insight could very well be a standard player. The worst thing that happens to red decks is flooding out, and this card is incredibly cheap in its cost and powerful in its effect, perhaps in the sideboard against control decks? Molten Vortex is no seismic assault, but being able to sneak in on turn one in modern is a thing that could happen. Life from the Loam has always wanted new friends, and Wizards gave it one. Sure, it doesn't go infinite with Swans of Bryn Argo like seismic assault, but who needs your infinite combos to just win the game on the spot or whatever? Scab Clan Berserker. Oh, Wizards, be still my mono red plain heart. I love how this guy just hoses control decks in a new and exciting way. Nice dig through time. Take two. Want to kill this guy with a removal spell? You're still taking two. Card is so sweet and I expected to see play. Green is next with Animist's Awakening. Basically saying, seriously guys, seriously. Landfall is coming back in Battle for Zendikar, which I am super pumped for. Landfall is an amazing mechanic, and the aim that Bloom players the world, while not busy solving calculus equations, also known as how is their deck supposed to win this turn, they're excited about it as well. Nissa's Revelation is a card that says, if there is a mono green ramp deck with Eldrazi in it, this card will be nuts. If there's no Eldrazi, this will be far less nuts. And by far less nuts, I mean kind of unplayable. Woodland Bellower. Hell of a magic card, people. I can also imagine the reason it states non-legendary is a card that starts with N and ends with Issa Fast would Seer, as making that happen on turn six every game would be super fair, you guys. Also, the fact that this has five toughness is a big deal. Surviving your and opponents' languish and not dying to Siege Rhino or Tassiger? Nice. Regardless, getting Corsair or Deathmiss Raptor or even more fringe cards like Reverend Hunter are seriously sweet possibilities. Lastly, let's talk about how freaking sweet Pyromancer's goggles are. First, are they the biggest flavor home run in the set? Because damn, that flavor text, those are Jaya Ballard's goggles. Just fantastic. And the card itself, man, how sick is that ability? Even even if it may not make constructed play, and the jury is still out, of course, the ability to fork any red spell cast by it is incredibly exciting and unique. Overall, seriously, one awesome set, Wizards. You outdid yourself for the last core set ever with so few reprints, and every mythic brand new? This is really more like a small set release than just a core set, because just a core set, this thing is not. Want to talk about it some more? Join Brad Nelson and myself as we discuss every single card in the set with the complete set review later this week. Join us, won't you? And until next time, Magic players, for the 300th time, and hopefully with more to come, this is Evan Irwin, tapping the cards so you don't have to. like the fatties.